Okay, so quick update here, guys. Remember when I said I was going to broadcast my own werewolf campaign this summer? Yeah, you do, right? Good. Well, one of the players, my co-host on the Yanking Kiwi podcast, Sam, was going to be in it, but unfortunately, Sam had some computer issues that put the kibosh on that plan, and we were forced to shelve it for the foreseeable future. If you want more information, I recommend viewing the video I made on the matter for further details. That's the bad news. The good news? is that another door may be opening, and I will keep you guys updated on how that goes as the details are still being hammered out. Also, this is going to be the last time I do these opening bits for future episodes, exceptions being me making a quick joke or a quick click to set the tone. Depends on the video. So without further ado, episode 3. While doing the requisite research for this video, meaning going through the various source books and <clears throat> digging through a form or two, I discovered that the Impergium, while certainly a flashpoint for the fall of the Galru, does not tell the whole story because there is another side to this. The fall of the Galru traces back to two events, the Impergium and the War of Rage. The reason modern Galru are in such a bad position is because the ancient Galru screwed up big time. But of course, stating this is useless without addressing the underlying question. Does liking traps make you gay? I mean, how did the Gauru get here? Yes. Uh, of course, there's a uh, large elephant in the room we gotta deal with first, and that elephant is that White Wolf provided very little information as to what canonically happened at this point in the Gauru's history. I want a hot dog, I want a milkshake. You'll get nothing and like it. There are reasons, provided both out and in universe, mind you. Out of universe is to give the players less restrictions to work with and to not be tied down with too much continuity. If from wanting to give the players more agency, I can appreciate this. Example, say your party encounters a spirit that remembers what happened at this time. You basically have free reign to decide exactly what happened. It's not too dissimilar from Robert E. Howard's Hyborian Age setting from Conan the Barbarian, but not making it connected to any specific period in recorded history, it makes it seem more timeless and avoids having to make concessions for the sake of historical accuracy. Now, the in-universe explanation is that the Gauru passed their history down orally, which is about the worst way you can pass down history. Have you ever wondered why you can't find accounts of Celtic, Norse, or Native American history from their perspectives? That's because they passed their histories orally and didn't develop written languages. That means details get lost, people misremember things, or the stories are completely exaggerated to the point that they don't bear resemblance to reality. For God's sake, Celtic mythology has a story where a guy literally jumps off a boat and turns into a fish so he can avoid having to bang some broads. And I know what you're thinking, and the answer is no, he was not magical in any capacity. Of course, it's also worth mentioning that many of these storytellers may have been under the influence of certain substances to aid them in connecting with the gods, spirits, and or ancestors so as to tell these stories. Shut up and get to the point! Where I'm going with this is that because the Gauru don't have a written language to properly record their own history, that effectively means nobody knows exactly what happened because each of the tribes had their own version of what happened. How badly do they disagree on this, you ask? Well, let's look at the Impergium just as an example. As far as details are concerned, it all differs from tribe to tribe. Red Talons, they claim that they began the Impergium. Glasswalkers say they didn't take part in it. The Fianna say that they were allowing the humans to advance little by little. See what I mean? Everybody's got their own version of what happened. What they agree on this is these two points. One, the werewolves were culling humans as a means of population control. And two, it ended with a concord. Now what's that you're asking? Well, you need a little context first. At the same time the werewolves were carrying out the Impergium, they were also at war with other shapeshifters in the War of Rage. Yeah, the Gower were not the only shapeshifters Gaia created. There are many different breeds of shapeshifters known collectively as the Pharah. You got Bastet, they turn into cats. Kitsune, turn into foxes. Korax, turn into crows. Graal, turn into bears. Ananasi, turn into spiders. You get the idea. Just like the Impergium, sources also differ on the reasons for it. Silent Striders say the Gauru attacked because the breeds weren't committed to the Impergium. Glasswalkers say the establishing of human cities encroached on territory held by other Pharah. Children of Gaia say both Pharah and Gauru used them for their own ends despite their best efforts to remain neutral. Red Towns and Geta Fenris say they were only following the lead of the Silver Fangs. Shadow Lords say the Pharah provoked them because they didn't respect the Gauru as the strongest of Gaia's children. 
Whatever the reasons are, what is known is that the Galru ultimately came out on top and it devastated the other Fera, some dangerously close to the point of extinction. Where the Concord fits into this is that the Galru had just gotten done winning a war. So they're tired, weakened, and most of all vulnerable. Because guess who figured out that silver kills werewolves? Bread! Apples! Uh, very small rocks! Cider! A great gravy! Cherries! Mud! A churches! Churches! Lead! Lead! I'll take what is humanity for 400, Alex. Turns out, when you're killing innocent people for a long enough time, they get a bit salty about it and start rising up. More to the point, this revelation put the Gower at something of a crossroads. Go back to killing humans, try cooperating with humans, or tuck tail and run like a bitch. <laughs> This is politic. After months of bickering, the Gauru decided that it would probably be best for them to sink into the shadows and leave humanity to its own devices, but you know, try to guide humanity more covertly. And they've maintained this to the modern day, keeping their existence secret and forming their own community. They of course would continue to mate with the most intelligent and or strongest of humanity so as to maintain the werewolf population. Shortly after the Impergium was ended, the Gauru nation was formed and the litany of the tribes would be formed as the code of laws governing the Garu nation. The tenets of the litany are as follows. Garu shall not mate with Garu. Combat the worm wherever it dwells and whenever it breeds. Respect the territory of another. Accept an honorable surrender. Submission to those of higher station. Respect those of lower station, for all are of Gaia. The first share of the kill for the greatest in station. Ye shall not eat the flesh of humans. The veil shall not be lifted. Do not suffer thy people to tend thy sickness. The leader may be challenged at any time during peace. The leader may not be challenged during wartime. Ye shall take no action that causes a cairn to be violated. And with that, the werewolves sank into the shadows, existing only as myths, legends, and scary stories told around campfires. Except the damage was already done. Centuries of preying on humanity left the human race with something of a genetic memory. Wonder why humans have an instinctual fear of wolves? This is why. You might not know the exact reasons why, but when you see a wolf, you automatically feel fear because your reptile brain remembers the fear your ancestors felt at the hands, or rather claws, of the Gauru. And when a human sees a werewolf, they're struck with delirium and go mad. And of course, scared humans, they tend to attack werewolves and kill them because, like I said, they figured out silver kills them. And if you think it's gotten easier for the Gauru, you are dead wrong. No, because human civilization has just expanded further and further into nature and the wolves have slowly been going to extinct. So yeah, you're pretty much fucked. You are in the worst position possible because your ancestors fucked everything up. They had the bright idea to start culling humans, they had the bright idea to go to war with the other shapeshifters, and of course, it never occurred to them that humanity would not only figure out their weakness, they would also get smarter and smarter and more powerful and more numerous. So now, humans and their cities are everywhere. And the problem is, is that this has spread both the influence of the weaver and the worm farther than it's ever had before. And this is why the apocalypse is a foregone conclusion. And at this point, this is as far as we can talk about the Gauru's collective history. Now, we're going to dig into the individual histories of all the tribes. And we're going to start with the Black Furies. 